How do you switch from one career to the other? How do you give a first step and the following steps towards reaching for your goals? Let's say you are doing something completely different than your desired career or occupation and you don't know where to start. Here is where I come today, oops, <laughs> with my story of myself and how I have done it several times. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. My name is Mindy and on this channel I make lots of content to help you to thrive and live the best life possible for you. Follow me also on Instagram and on TikTok because over there I put reels and content with the same purpose. And now let's dive in. Okay, I decided to do this video because I was re thinking, <laughs> reconsidering my content and someone told me something very interesting during the past weeks. Uh, she said to me, well, you should share something that you really know, something that you have done, you've gone through. So you give something unique to the rest. And what I'm sharing with you today, I think it is more or less that. Sometimes we take for granted what we are who we are, because we are that, right? We cannot really observe it from the outside and we think that that is a given. Um, and so I want to share with you how I do what is natural to me and I hope, well, I put it into practical steps so you can benefit from it. So from a very young age, I have been always interested in arts in any possible way. My very first attempt to do art was painting when I was a little girl and I used to tell my mom I wanted to be a painter. But the time went by, of course, I kept doing that as a, a side thing, like whatever, next to school. But then when I was uh, 13 years old, my dad took me and my youngest sister to the theater to watch a play and I fell in love with it. It was the first time I saw people playing for real in real life. So I told my dad that I wanted to learn, like I wanted to become an actress. There were classes in that theater and uh, I, I read like a poster somewhere, picture this beginning of 2000s, right? There was a poster there, no social media. And I told my dad that I wanted to go there. So he convinced my mom to, um, yeah, for me to go there because my mom was always more like strict about, you know, time schedule, school and all of that. So we squeezed it in next to my uh, athletics um, the participation in the teams as well. Anyways, so I started going there. And so this was my very first career or something I did professionally, uh, acting. So I started acting at the age of 13 uh, at uh, like the classes and then I started to train for theater. But actually what I wanted to do I, is that I wanted to be a TV actress. So I thought for myself, well, nobody in my family is in this field. Me at age 13, 14 actually, I think I turned, I turned at year 14. So nobody's gonna do it for me. How am I gonna get there? Imagine my little me, 14 year old, trying to go to the TV without any knowledge of how to get there. Um, so I asked my theater teacher and he said, for you to be on the TV, you need to audition. So I just looked into, you know, the big books of telephone numbers on that time. It was like a huge yellow book. And uh, I looked up for the numbers of a TV station and I called. Of course, behind the back of my mother because she didn't let me use the, the, the line. <laughs> you remember those phones with the cable and all of that. So I called and I called and I called until one day they said, we need extras and we need teenager extras. So I asked my mom to go with me and I, and then I got selected as an extra, which was nothing really, but it was for me very important to have given a very first step into being on the TV, seeing the camera, seeing all of, you know, what happened. But I saw the main character was also a teenager and I thought I want to be there and I'm gonna keep insisting. So number one thing, perseverance. I really wanted it and I 
tried it and I tried it and I called almost every single day asking for auditions, probably six months. I don't remember if it was a year. I think it was like six, eight months until I got an audition. And on the first try, they did take me as a main character. This is on national television in Ecuador. So I played there for probably, so from the age of 14 until I was 21. So that was seven years of my life playing different characters, like as a main characters in different episodes of different drama series. So that was my very first experience as, you know, starting up a profession of something that I really wanted to do. So I learned that with perseverance, you could get somewhere. Of course, you need to have also some talent. But even if you have a talent, I would encourage you always to perfection the skill. And sometimes that would look like you going to a course like me with acting. But later on in this video, you will see that sometimes I did self study, for instance, or I started up a project. So it is important that either if you study by yourself or if you go to a course, you always try and perfection the skill and become better at it. But my guess here is if you want to do something and um, you feel that you're good at it, then there might be some talent in you. You need to, I think another thing I had was to be confident about my capacity to play well, to play, you know, and, and you and your case scenario would be your capacity to do the thing that you want to do. But this isn't the first case scenario, so first thing I did let's say i was just lucky i tried i was confident and it went through and i went like and i did this okay later on i stopped playing t on tv because i didn't get the sort of roles i wanted to get because well maybe this is a, a, a video a subject for a different video because i was not qualifying on the physical aspects because as a 21 year old i was quite thin and they wanted a specific more voluptuous voluptuous is a word uh, type of body and i think i was never chosen because of that so i put that aside and then i just went back to my other passion well i was always writing next to playing on the TV. At the age of 14 as well, I realized I was having literature classes at school and I realized how much I loved poetry and how much I loved, I really, really, really loved it. I loved writing and sonnets and anything related to poetry. So I started to write my own poetry. I loved it and I started to participate in contests also for poetry and I won several contests as well and then um, I at age I think it was probably how old was I maybe I was 21 22 something like that I started a blog online like you know like blog posts and stuff like that and so with that I then started a Twitter account. Then it was like the boom of a Twitter. I think it was more like 2008, 2009, something like that. So, uh, and there I was thinking, I love writing, but I don't know how to do this professionally. I really don't know, but I want to do it professionally. And I didn't know if I wanted to become a novelist or if I wanted to become, I didn't know. All I knew was that I want to write and I want to write professionally. So I kept on writing every single day. I kept on tweeting every single day and I started to gain a visibility and people started to follow me. So at that time, having a thousand followers was a big number when Twitter was just starting. Now it's having a thousand followers is everybody. Back then it was like a significant number. So when I was at about 2000 followers on that account, someone from a TV channel, from another TV channel reached out to me and said, you write amazingly well. I would like for you to, tr to try and write a script for a TV show. That was amazing. You can say I was lucky, but at the same time, I was also doing consistently what I thought I was good at. You know, I was writing. I was writing every single day. I was making uh, micro stories. Uh, I was telling uh, like uh, literature in small like tweets and I was writing my blog post as well. So then I tried for uh, writing as a TV uh, writer uh, for comedies 
and I got chosen. So I had this new, very well paid job as a script writer. And that was something I did for the next three years or four years or something like that. I also wrote for an, an independent film. I studied, by the way, also advertising prior to this while also doing the, the um, and the acting job, I was uh, working as a script writer uh, briefly for uh, a year or something. So I was writing and I continued writing uh, for TV shows. And then I decided that that was not fulfilling for me anymore. So I took a break from all of the arts here and there. And here comes the real, real story I want to tell you today. So I moved countries um, where I'm based right now in the Netherlands. So by that time, I was working as a project manager and a company that had nothing to do with me, you know, just, just a, a job I took because I needed it. And I, it was just, it, it was a natural flow of events and things that led me to using uh, a camera because I was interested in photography. So I had this flatmate and my flatmate had a camera that I didn't use. So I, I asked if I could use the camera because the camera was just like stored somewhere. And this person said yes. So I took the camera with me and I explored the city, took photos and I loved the feeling I had of looking through the lenses of a camera and capture, you know, capture people, capture moments. The most I like was people and emotions. So I really like that. And I continued to do that with every vacation. So I would take the camera with me. This is back in 2016. I took the camera with me. I went to places. I went to uh, Spain. I went to Portugal. Everywhere I went, I went with the camera. Okay. So when I came back with the camera, I still didn't have the feeling that I wanted to be a photographer, but all I wanted to do was to explore this. I guess, you know, like I, I am a creative person and I needed to express this creativity somehow. And I was curious to try this thing and I did it. But at the same time, I took the time to learn and use a camera on my own. I didn't take any courses. I tried and explored every single button of it. And then I started to show the photographies I took and my friends and my colleagues were impressed by my photos. They were like, but you just started learning this and they look quite professional. And I was like, really? I was not even aware of what professional was or not. All I knew was like, okay, I could capture a good moment. I could capture a lightning I wanted to capture. I could capture something significant for me. But that's the moment when I started thinking, maybe I could make some money with it. So, um, but I didn't, I didn't really pursue it directly because you remember I had this job, but in this job, in this company I was at, uh, because I told and I showed my work to everybody there. Uh, my boss uh, at that time said to me, I, uh, why, don't, why don't you take photos for an event we're having? So I felt so flattered that he considered me as an event photographer and I did, like we went to Dusseldorf in Germany and I took photographs for that event that later on we used for the website and other stuff. So that was like a great, like, it, it was a great feeling, you know? Um, so when people ask me, what do you do? I said, I am a beginner photographer. And within this network of this company I was working for, there was a woman who was a client to the business who saw my work and said, do you want to take photos for me? So you see, here is another re repetitive pattern. I was doing what I had to do, what I felt like doing. So it was not that I want to learn photography and I was not doing, I was just thinking. I was, I was actually doing it. The same goes with writing and with acting, if you see. Okay, so I was, I was taking photography then and then I started to post the work. I created a Facebook uh, account and I posted the work I did for this woman and a friend of mine saw it and asked me if I could uh, make a photo shoot for her and her family, her husband and kids. And so this is why I started to do small photo shoots here and there. But this is not the main story I wanted to tell you. The main story is when I got fired from that job, in 2018 or for end of 2017 actually and I 
didn't know what to do next, but I knew that after this job, I was gonna do something creative, okay? So what happened is that after this happened, that they, they had to let me go because of a shortage in uh, money coming in, um, I went and I, like one other thing I do normally is I follow my heart and I felt that what I wanted to do was to travel in Asia. It was not that I had tons of money available, but I did my budget and I thought, okay, yes, it is for sure that I can have this money instead of traveling. I can use it to live for a longer time if I don't have a job. Yes, that's true, but I need to do this and I need to trust God. I need to trust my gut and my heart. So I did it and I went there for three months. So while I was traveling in Asia for three months, I went to Indonesia, I went to Thailand and uh, uh, went to Singapore, so I stopped by uh, Malaysia as well. So I documented things I was seeing. And this is the interesting part. I like to document. I, I realized, wow, this is, this is so cool. I like to create like a, a series of pictures. And you know, like I let myself fly with my imagination because also I took the trip and that trip was so important because it, it, it helped me to look at reality from a different perspective. And then I started to uh, document what I saw. And you know, when I came back home, I still didn't have a plan of what I was gonna do. But all I knew is that I needed to learn properly how to edit a picture. I didn't know how to edit a picture because my work before was all about only moving up and down the brightness or the contrast, but it was not like properly looking at the color tone and changing this and that. I spent the next month or something uh, editing all of the pictures I took, which were a lot of them. And while looking at the pictures, I had this idea. I have a lot of pictures where there is plastic around beaches. I want to make a series about the plastic pollution and I want to tell the story of what I saw in these places and how it is affecting people because I also talk to people. So I was like, whoa, I really, really like this whole documentation and telling story through visuals, but also text. So I made this slides where I was showing the story and the text. And you ask me now, but how do you make money with that? Well, that was the same question I had. I didn't know how to. Um, but all I knew is that it was possible. So next thing, I had a belief that somehow I was gonna be able to sell my work. And it was not that I thought I'm gonna become rich with this or I am going to make a living forever with it. It was more immediately, I am gonna be able to sell this. But how do I do it when I have no contacts within the world of environment or organizations or how am I gonna do this? Okay, next step, I went on networking. So I used LinkedIn, changed my completely my LinkedIn profile change my occupation, whatever it is that I was doing with my LinkedIn, you know, like trying to find another office job. I thought that's not really what I want to be doing. So I'm going to give myself credit and time to pursue what I really want, change that. And I changed my title to documentary photographer, conservation photographer, um, visual storyteller. And then I started adding up people on LinkedIn that were related to this world I was trying to enter in. I sent email to people. I also networked with other photographers or with people within the environment. And I asked them for coffee. I asked them for, to go for lunch. And you know, it was, it was yes, time I was investing and also money because you know, if you ask someone, can you meet me to, you know, talk about, discuss what you do, the least you can do is to pay for their beverage or their, or their meal. So it was an investment from my side but eventually it paid off because from all of these people I, I met, uh, there was a woman who was a founder of some organization who decided to buy my work, to use it in uh, some campaigns that we're doing or to use it in some, in some events that we're doing. Also, I then contacted another organization. This one, I will tell the name, this is the World Wildlife Funds in the Netherlands. And uh, they hired me as an events photographer for events related to also uh, conservation. 
uh, which was great because then I was covering events and they used my work big uh, on campaigns and stuff like that, websites, so that was cool. And through them, I also uh, met the people because they hired external agencies. And so through these agencies, some uh, people that worked there liked me as a photographer because they saw my work and they were like, can you work with us in this other campaign? And then I started covering uh, runs and like, you know, events for sports events that had nothing to do with conservation, but I still enjoyed doing. I started up my own company uh, doing this photography work. Also, I held my own uh, photo exhibitions throughout all of this year. So my first photo exhibition was in 2018. Um, that was, um, I made a, a like a slide of, uh, of images that I later on put in a venue uh, of, a, of a, a center in the Netherlands, a place for art, a series called Here and There. So it was about how we think we are in a place, but we're not because we're with our phones. So it was it was, I was exploring this, this subject of this connection while we connect with our phones. Um, and after that, I held other exhibitions in the Netherlands. I held two exhibitions re with regards to the plastic pollution and one in Ecuador as well in a big center, big venue. It was the whole place for myself. And I can tell I was so proud of myself that I could bring, you know, one vision I had of I want to do this to bring it to an actual place and having an impact and people asking me and telling me, hey, congratulations, you're doing this and it's very important. So it feels really great. Uh, and so then the pandemic came along and you know, like all of these events stopped out of a sudden, but I uh, had other work coming in through another organization that works in the uh, realm of health innovation. So that's uh, the project I'm working and they're currently documenting, still so working as a documentary photographer, uh, documenting the advances within a project in health tech or yeah, innovation in health. So this is my story. And I think the pattern, what I can tell you that I think you can also replicate for yourself is First of all, acquire the skill. You need to acquire a skill if you don't have it. So you can, you want to be whatever, an, an, engineer, an engineer, you want to be an actress, but you need to know how to perform and how to do the thing actually. So you need to acquire the skill and that after that, you need to practice and you need to start up projects. If you are in the realm of arts like myself, you need to do something. You know, like now I want to have this uh, YouTube community and I want to go big on YouTube and creating content because I really like, you know, now I, after photography, now you understand why I like using the camera and why I, I also have started making my own short films. So I'm, I'm now moving towards another direction, which is more like camera and stuff. Um, but I need to be busy creating stuff. So how is the opportunity gonna come to me if I am not ready for the opportunity? How am I gonna team up with other people and create something amazing if I am not doing something? You know, how is someone gonna say, oh, that's cool, this person is doing that if you're not actually doing it? So I think that is really, really important that you do. Another one is that you network, that you tell the world what you're doing, that you tell your family, your friends, use social media to share what you are doing. And now with social media, it's so easy because really you put a couple of stories or, or reels about something you're doing and people say, wow, you're doing this, you know? And before maybe you needed to go to a lot of events for people to know and now it's like social media, just depending on what you choose to show, the world is gonna say, hey, this is, this is what she's doing. So this is, or he is doing. So I think it's important that you network and to use your social media for it. Other than that, sell your work. So whenever you want to do something and you like something, let's say you like something that is artistic, even if it's a music, I don't know, like even if you record one single, try and put it in iTunes. And even if it's gonna be something small, you're gonna make a small commission, try and make it 
that people can buy something from you, even if it's gonna be small, if you have a product that you can put out there. One example of this is my one-on-one -on -one sessions I have on this channel, that is something I am selling. And that's also another story of another thing I do um, next to the other things I do. And I can tell you, yes, believing in yourself is important, but I think beyond believing in yourself, I think you need to stay motivated throughout the journey. And how do you do that? Because it's, it's really not easy. I can tell you now the story and it sounds amazing. Well, I started taking photography in the case of photography in 2016. And you know, it was like, it was like a year and a half that I didn't make much money with that. How do you stay motivated if you don't see the things are moving forward? 16, I started taking photos. At 18, I took it professionally. And now it's 2022. So it's six years, you see? And I can tell you now, looking back, this is a story, but you have to go through the whole process of learning, networking, selling a bit, it doesn't go well, trying again, uh, applying for freelancing jobs, applying for jobs in the realm on the film that you want. This is gonna require that you're motivated enough and it is okay if one day or two you don't feel motivated, but you need to create tools in order for you to be motivated. Maybe it is a subject for a different video. Let me know if you want me to tell you more about it. But one way could be, for instance, making a vision board. And I know many people, uh, not many, but some people are against it because they think it's, it's not good because it's like witchcraft, whatever. I don't think it's witchcraft if you don't use it as witchcraft. For me, a vision board, it is a place where I look at the things I want to have or the, it, it will evoke the feelings I want to feel. And if I look at an exhibition, I had a vision board with an exhibition of photography. I would look at that and I would feel excited because I would say, wow, one day I'm gonna have my own exhibitions and I have had up until now, well, four exhibitions of myself. Um, another way to keep yourself motivated is to also like write constantly daily on your journal why you are doing what you're doing or having a one pager written of what excites you of this goal of yours and read it every day or read it often where you're not feeling motivated. Um, one thing that I would recommend is to keep your big dreams to yourself if the people you have around you are not going to encourage you or if you tell them like, I want to do this and they're a bit negative, don't share it, keep it to yourself and work in silence. So this is the way I have changed of tracks and I keep changing because now I am becoming a novelist, I'm working on my novel and I am also making films. I made my first short film and I want to make more of that and I'm working on this channel. So you see, I am a multi-talented, uh, a multidisciplinary artist and yeah, I am really uh, proud of myself, but I also know that it requires that I do what I have to do, keep myself motivated, network, tell the world, and repeat the same cycle on and on again. Tell me please in the comments if this video was motivational for you. I hope it inspired you. Don't forget, to follow me on Instagram and on TikTok because I put videos over there where I try to also inspire you, motivate you to live your best life. Tell me in your comments what you're working on, what is your career switch that you're gonna do. And till next time, don't forget to like this video. Bye.